It was the birthday of Alexandra Vladimirovna Shaposhnikova, the widow of an eminent specialist in bridge construction, but this was not the only reason why her family were giving a party. There is something moving about a family, sitting together around a table, in order to be with a loved one about to go on a long journey. This custom answers a deep need. It is not for nothing that, unlike many other old customs, it is still so widely observed. The country was at war. Friends, family, everyone understood that this might be their last gathering. There was no knowing how many of them would meet again. It had been decided to invite Mikhail Mostovskoy and Pavel Andreev, family friends of long standing. As a 19-year-old polytechnic student, Alexandra Vladimirovna's late husband had gone to Stalingrad for a few months to work as an engineer on a tugboat on the River Volga. Andreev had been a stoker on the same boat, and he and the young Shaposhnikov had often chatted together on deck. Andreev had later become a friend to the whole family. When Alexandra moved to Stalingrad with her children, he became a regular visitor. Zhenya, the youngest of Alexandra's three daughters, had joked, Clearly one of Mama's admirers. The Shaposhnikovs had also invited Tamara Beroshkina, whom they had got to know only recently. Tamara and her children had seen so many burning buildings, air raids and hurried evacuations, that the Shaposhnikovs had got into the habit of referring to her as poor Tamara. What's happened to poor Tamara? How come poor Tamara hasn't been round? For many years, this three-room apartment in Stalingrad had felt spacious, home only to Alexandra Vladimirovna and her grandson, Sheryozha. Now, though, it was crowded. First, Zhenya had moved in, and then, after the German summer offensive, Alexandra's middle daughter, Marusia, had moved in, along with her husband, Stepan Spiridonov, and her daughter, Vera. Until then, the three of them had lived a few miles away, near Stalgrez, the central power station. Anticipating night air raids on Stalgrez, most of the engineers with relatives in the city had sent their wives and children to join them. Spiridonov had installed not only his family, but also a piano and several items of furniture. When she wasn't on night shift, another old friend, Sofia Osipovna Levington, would sleep at the Shaposhnikovs. She had first got to know Alexandra long ago, in Paris and Bern. She now worked as a surgeon in one of the city hospitals. And only the previous day, Tolia had arrived unexpectedly. He was another of Alexandra Vladimirovna's grandchildren, the son of her eldest daughter, Ludmilla, and he was on his way from military school to his new unit. He'd come to the apartment with his travelling companion, a lieutenant on his way back to the front after a spell in hospital. When they first appeared, his grandmother had failed to recognise Tolia in his army uniform and had asked rather severely, Who is it you're looking for, comrades? And then she had yelled, Tolia! Zhenya had said that they absolutely must celebrate this family reunion.